So you're in your 60s, you've got about a million dollars saved for retirement, and you're wondering about three primary questions. The first one is, is can I retire? Or what are the chances of my retirement success? The second question might be, when should I take my social security? Should I take it immediately at retirement or should I delay it until some point in the future? And then finally, you're wondering, should you be doing any Roth conversions along the way to help mitigate any tax liabilities that could be there for you in the future? So those are the three questions we're gonna evaluate today as we look at marriage sample situation and hopefully this information and these different thoughts or things we're going to walk through are going to be helpful for you as you evaluate your retirement situation and maybe you can apply these principles to help you have a more successful retirement so with that said let's go ahead and jump in and check out mary samples situation so right here you can see mary samples financial picture right now she's single she's 66 and she wants to retire here in a few months whenever she turns 67 in April of 2025. Her overall net worth is around 1.1 to $1.2 million, but of that $1.2 million, around 1 million is actually her liquid asset. So she's got $20,000 in cash, she's got 7,000 in a brokerage account, and the majority of her retirement savings is in her IRA. So that's a key component to this, because one of the questions she had is, is, should I be doing any Roth conversion? So we're gonna pay attention to that as we go through this and evaluate that here in a second. But also just know that in that IRA, that's invested around 50% stock and then 50% money market. So that's the current allocation of those funds. We'll see if there's any changes that might need to be made there as well. She also has a small car loan and then also her primary home which she owns outright is around two hundred thousand dollars it's a condo so it's not a, um, a normal primary residence from that standpoint so that's her situation that's where she is overall and then let's look at her goals so uh, she wants to retire like i said here at 67 in a few months in april of 2025 and from an expense standpoint she expects it to be around fifty five hundred dollars per month is what she expects to spend that's based on her current expectations but then also she's got a few other items that are going to be really important to what she's wanting to do she's want to make some updates to her home both in the first year of retirement but also in subsequent years as well and so if we can see that there you can see that she wants to make twenty five thousand dollars home improvements in year one so that That'd be 2025 that'd be the year in which that takes place so that'd be a one-time type of deal but then also she wants to make additional home improvements in the subsequent years after that maybe a new roof or ac or furnace something like that and so she wanted to allocate some dollars ten thousand dollars per year for about five years beginning in 2026 so six years worth of home improvements, the first one being 25,000, the next five years after that being 10,000 per year. Additionally, she wanted to have about a $5,000 travel budget annually built into this as well. We've got that until 16 years. So basically until 2040 is kind of what her outlook is there in terms of $5,000 a year to go travel the US and do some things with the family that she wanted to do. And then also she's like, hey, I'm probably gonna have to buy a new car at some point. So we have that built in about $50,000 in 2030 as just an expectation. Could be a moving target, but we wanted to build that in to make sure that's accounted for. Also, we've got just general healthcare costs for her Medicare premiums once those do begin here in 2025. So that's kind of an, a national average, if you will, for Part B and then a Medigap plan as well. So that's her goals. That's what she's looking at from an expense standpoint, which these are actually a lot of expenses here. She wants to make sure, hey, can I do these home improvements? That's a big question in her mind is, can I still retire successfully and do all these home improvements that I feel like I have to do for the rest of her life? That's where she stands overall. That's her income, that's her expenses, her goals. So with that, let's go ahead and see if she's gonna be able to retire and then we'll start kind of playing around, answer some other questions and look at some adjustments as well for her. And so right off the bat, you can see this is a good Good chance of success 98% I'm totally fine with that and for her she was really encouraged by that because she had this fear of like oh my goodness I've got a lot of expenses here on the front end for home improvements and just maintenance stuff I'm curious if that's gonna really destroy my chances of retirement and so right off the bat we can see that this is still something that's possible for her but what I want to evaluate is a couple different things that she had questions on since we can answer the question hey yes Mary it looks like you're gonna be able to retire successfully based on some different things here are we gonna take your Social Security earlier or we're we gonna delay it until 70 like you wanted to do but then also in just a moment we're going to look at those Roth conversions and see if that's going to be beneficial for her from a tax standpoint so really quickly let's look at the Social Security so right now she's taking it at 70 but what happens if we take it upon her retirement what does that change overall in the plan and it actually decreases the probability of success so what's happening there is she's lowering her expected fixed income because she's going to be decreasing her social security amount by taking it earlier than she otherwise had originally planned 70 so she would be taking it earlier and that's going to decrease her chance of success but one thing to know here is that her end of life balance or how much money she has at the end of her life is actually not changed a whole lot so there's really not a huge amount of decrease there but i'm curious on these comparisons so it's really a little bit less money but what you can see here 
on the front end of this chart by taking her Social Security a little bit earlier, she's gonna have to deplete less of her money over time. So the first few years, that's where her depletion out of her IRA would likely be because she's gotta have income to spend, especially for some of those home improvement projects. And so if she doesn't have the Social Security coming in because she's delaying it, that's all gonna have to come out of her IRA, which we'll see in just a moment is really not a big problem. But what this does is it smooths out how much money she has. So she doesn't dig into her portfolio as much on the front end because that Social Security will be starting sooner. So that's something that we can evaluate. Right now, I'm thinking that that's not gonna be the optimal thing for her. If we look at this, we can see that age 70 will give her the most benefit over her lifetime. Now, right now we have her passing away at age 90. So if she lives a shorter amount of time, there's obviously a break even point there a little bit. And so if she dies at let's say 80, it might make more sense for her to take her benefits earlier than age 70. But just know that right now we're gonna to stick to age 70 being uh, her social security timing age and that will give her around $4,500 in today's dollars as it stands right now today per month, which is really, really good. Okay, so with that understood, and if we look at her cash flows, we can see that demonstrated here. On the front end, she's gonna have her salary for a partial year next year in 2025 because she will still be working at least a portion of that year. Her pension will also start immediately after that. So that's kind of why there's still a salary and a small pension. And then right now, like I said, we don't have any of her social security beginning until age 70. So that's a partial year here and her pension will be $20,000 a year moving forward. So what that does is she'll have a small fixed income. And so that means she will have a certain amount of money she's got to take from her portfolio. So she's got to take this out of her traditional IRA in these years to meet her income needs. So once her social security begins here at 70 and then 71, less money is going to have to come out of her IRA, which is a good thing, but her expenses are also still there. So she's got normal living expenses here, but also her goal of home improvement stuff and then also travel goals. So if she's got different spending, which the total outflow of $120,000 depends on the year. There's obviously a lot coming out in year one because of a few things. She's maxing out her 401k, but then also she's got that $25,000 home improvement goal as well. So that's a lot of spending in 2025 because of that. But I wanna look also at her tax situation. So we can see here, this money's gotta come from somewhere. That's gonna come from her traditional IRA. So she'll be taxed on that as normal income. But one of her big questions was, Jacob, should I be doing any Roth conversion. So let's take a look at that and see what that presents to us. So you can see as a single person, she's gonna have taxes the rest of her life, mostly because she's single, number one, but then also because she does have a fixed income and she will have social security that will be partially taxable. And she's gonna have to take money out of a traditional IRA to spend to meet her living expense needs and some of her goals. So with that said, she's got a tax rate that will be met uh, no matter what. So does Roth conversions, do they help at all? She's not doing any Roth conversions. Let's see if she fills up the 10% bracket, which that's already gonna be full. What about the 12% bracket? I think that's going to be full as well, no matter what, every single year. Okay, so the 22% bracket, is that helpful at all? So actually, there's no Roth conversion potential here in the first few years. It's not until we get to RMD age that she actually has some potential to do Roth conversions. Again, your RMDs cannot be fulfilled by your Roth conversion. So there's two separate things there. You have to do RMD and you have to do a conversion the same year. They can't coincide with each other. And so let's see the 24% bracket. She could have a little bit money left over if she fills up the 24% bracket on the front end. Now here's the catch. Because she does not have any taxable investments or cash holdings, she's got minimal money to pay the taxes with on the front end. So all those taxes will have to be withheld from her IRA, which means technically a larger conversion amount, which is gonna be digging a slight hole in her Roth IRA in terms of accumulating or recouping those tax dollars. So it's got a bigger hole to dig out of if she withholds the taxes from her traditional IRA as she does that conversion. Um, but just know that there is potentially a benefit here. I don't think there is much of a benefit if we go further. Nope. So if we fill up this bracket all the way to 32, there's not really a benefit. So in her situation, are Roth conversions something that she could benefit from? Maybe. I don't know that this is worth the trouble of doing it. I would say this. I would probably go back to her plan and say, if we've got a million dollars in a tax deferred account, that's the reason for potentially needing to do Roth conversions. What I would say is this. Why don't we just leave this at 70, leave that there, and then we can refresh. And then we can actually, what if we increase your travel budget by $2,500 a year? So move that to 7,500. So refresh refresh that there we go. So we, if we delay that social security, we move this up by $2,500. We actually give her more spending money for travel and fun. And then I'm curious now, if we go back to this, we go to the proposed plan, we go to distributions, we come back here. So that actually decreased the benefit by spending more out of the tax deferred account. It decreased the benefit of the Roth conversion. So for Mary, I would say a few things to her. Number one, she is able to retire here in April of 2025 because that's what she was hoping to do. Number two, she's going to be able to delay her social security until 70 
assuming obviously she is healthy, but if she did have some health concerns, she might want to consider taking it slightly earlier, just depends. But for her, she does have good health. And so she would delay that till 70 to get the highest benefit possible. And then also too, I don't think Roth conversion is going to be something that could help her out from a tax standpoint or leave her with more money one day. So hopefully this particular case study helps you evaluate your situation, maybe as a single person, someone in your 60s have about a million dollars saved. Maybe this helps you kind of evaluate what you're looking at and maybe gives you some ideas around how you can better or improve your retirement plan. So obviously there are a lot of variables here in her situation that we can't necessarily talk about here today in this video. But if you're curious about what this looks like for you, if you want maybe some analysis for your retirement plan or maybe help with it, feel free to shoot me an email or schedule some time on my calendar below for an intro call. And I'd love to speak with you and help you in whatever way I can. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.